Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> uh, this is an AK-47, as you can see. This is an Airsoft one. It's not real. Don't anybody start panicking. Um, this is an Airsoft uh, AK-47. Uh, I think it's the 47U with a short barrel. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's an AK. Um, now, you're probably thinking, what on earth is this maniac up to now? What's he going to do? <laughs> well, the thing is, um, there's a bit of a project that my son and I have been talking about. Uh, you may be familiar with the fact that my son does quite a lot of airsoft. He's very keen on it. And he asked me the other day if we could actually build a custom airsoft rifle, a particular model that he wanted that you can't get as an airsoft weapon. And I said, well, you know, we can certainly give it a go. And I mentioned it to the chap who runs the airsoft club that he goes to, who uh, it's Red One Airsoft. Um, and the chap that runs it is an absolute legend. He really is the nicest guy you could wish to meet. And as a demonstration of that, he said, oh, hang on. I've got some old AKs that you can have. Uh, <laughs> these old rental guns of his uh, that are a bit sort of past it. And he actually gave me two of these AKs and um, to use for this project that we've got going. But I've kind of run into a bit of a snag and that's what we're going to talk about today. So basically what happened was uh, this one is still uh, complete, more or less complete. Um, both of the guns that he's given us have faults. They don't work properly, but it's more a proof of concept. The problem with this one is you can see the safety catch is applied. As soon as you connect a battery to it, it starts firing full auto and won't stop. You're not even touching the trigger. The safety's on, it just fires constantly. So that's no good. Um, but that's not really the issue. Because um, as I say, this is more just a proof of concept. He gave me another one, which has a, a slightly different problem, which I'll talk about in a minute. But I wanna basically talk about what I'm gonna do today because let, I'll tell you what, let me just show you, it'll probably be easier. Let's move this one out of the way. Ugh. So this is the other one. And as you can see, I've, I've stripped it down. Um, so we've basically got the lower receiver and this contains the gearbox and the motor is inside the pistol grip. And I bought this magazine. This is a short magazine. Uh, for the project that we've been working on or working towards. And today I just wanted to put it on to get some measurements. So I put the magazine on and I looked at that and I thought, that looks like a bolt gun <laughs> from Warhammer 40K. And those of you who know me, and there are some people who watch this channel who do actually know me in real life, you will know that I get very single-minded about things, which sounds great, but it is actually not, because what happens is if I get an idea in my head, I have to see it through before I can concentrate on anything else. And so basically, I now have to make this into a bolt gun. And if I don't, I won't be able to do anything else. <laughs> so uh, after that rather long-winded introduction, um, that's what we're gonna do today. So let's get on with it. Okay, so there is actually method in my madness with this because there are, uh, what I'm gonna be able to do with this is use this as kind of a test template almost, like a, a test of some of the things that I want to do for the other project. Um, so I've got here some bits of aluminium. So this is a bit of flat stock. This is uh, 40 millimeters wide. And I've got some bits here of um, angle. These are, what are these, 30 by 30. And what I wanna do is I want to use these to kind of build up, oh, let's get that one away, it's making the light shine all over the place. Um, I wanna use these to kind of build up the receiver to the shape that I want. Um, so as far as this one is concerned, this is about the length I want it. I don't want it really any longer than this. Now, the other bit that we need is, this. Uh, this is basically the feed system. Um, so that goes in oh, there like that. And basically that fits 
over the over the gearbox um, and then underneath we have where it feeds from the magazine so and this is also uh, what they call a hop up which is this bit here and basically what that does is it puts like a backspin on the pellet to make them more accurate um, but like I said I don't really want it any uh, longer than this so normally this bit here supports uh, like the handguard and also like here where I've got the uh, this is the old barrel so that slides over and goes into this tube here and that's what holds that in place now we don't need that so let's just get rid of that um, so what I'm going to do is cut some of this off now I think some of it might be quite useful because what I would like to do is because I need somewhere to put the battery for a start because normally on these the battery goes in the stock so this is the battery or a battery and this is that's the stock that came off it now the stock goes on the back like that and the battery goes inside the stock now obviously if I take the stock off I've got nowhere to put the battery so I'm going to put the battery uh, on top of the gearbox like that there's plenty of space so let's get rid of that what I'm planning to do is use this angle, basically something like this, um, to box, box in the top and make this into that very distinctive like boxy shape that the, um, the bolt gun has. So that's the thing. But I think it's a bit too big like this. So I think what I need to do is take some of this off. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but along here, there's like a straight line. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off along that line and cut it off flush with the front. And I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. Yet. <laughs> uh, this is only plastic, so it's not going to be difficult to cut. Um, but what I'm also thinking about is whether to keep this part as well. I don't, I don't really need it because I'm going to put a muzzle over it. Um, and then I need to cut the barrel down, obviously. So I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut this off across here and across here. And what I might do, it's a little bit dodgy, but I'll give it a go, is I might cut this on the mitre saw. Because as I say, it's only plastic, so I'll give it a go. Um, yeah, so that's what we'll do first. So what I've done after a great deal of thinking is I've decided to actually keep this bit as it is for now. I've cut the front this front piece off, so we'll get rid of that. Because what I'm thinking might work is if I take this piece here and put it on the top there, like that, I can actually use this here, this hole, as a pivot point. And so what I'm thinking is I'll put it on like that. Uh, I'll run it to the back. I'll put a filler piece in here. And then what I can do is actually cut this in such a way and bend it so that it folds down and forms the back of the gun. And what I'll do is, is I'll cut, trim this down, this piece here, and then use this hole for a pin so basically what will happen is the back will come down over this and then put a pin in it to hold it in place. Hopefully. <laughs> so, okay, so what I need to do next is... Uh, yeah, I'm also going to put another piece of this on the bottom here at the front to kind of square it up. And then I'll figure out a way to fit a muzzle on there afterwards. Um, so, yeah. I think we're getting somewhere. Uh, so I need to do some measurements to measure from the top of here to the bottom of here to get the length of the back plate. So I know how much longer to cut this so that I can bend it down to make it fit 
I need to find something to reinforce this because it's only plastic. Um, I think what I'd like to do, if I, I don't know whether you'd be able to see that, but um, what I want to try and do is find something to fit in there, like a piece of metal tube to fit in there to reinforce it so that when it's pivoting, it's not rubbing on the plastic. So I'll find something to fit in there. And yeah, and then we can start cutting some metal. Right, so after some cutting and, and bending and, and filing and whatnot, uh, this is basically where we are at the moment. Um, I have made one half. I've got to figure out a way to um, secure this joint here. Um, basically, I need a welder and I don't have a welder. Um, I can TIG weld, I just don't have a TIG welder. And I am not gonna go out and <laughs> buy a dig welder just to do this um but that's you know we'll get around that in the worst case i'll just jb weld the thing um so the way this works at the moment is um i'm going to use this hole at the front as a, a either a pivot point or an anchor point either way but that's going to there'll be a hole in this um and basically what will happen is that will fit over the front like that that goes on the back uh like that goes drops in between these two ribs, I'm gonna cut these down. And then what I'll do is I'll drop a pin through there to secure it in place. Uh, so that will basically go like that. So that's where we are currently. Now, what I'm gonna do, because obviously there's a big gap here, I'm going to get another piece of aluminium and put it in here to fill in this and i'm also going to get a piece i'm also going to put a piece in here to act as um to make it look like the you know the bolt um like the ejection port with the bolt carrier in it uh that will probably just be a flat piece that i will attach to probably the back of this uh, i've got a piece of um i've got some 20 mil flat stock and i've got some uh 25 mil flat stock as well so that's i'll probably use that to block in the sides on this side now as far as the other side goes because it's a different shape because obviously um this should be a little it might be more simple or it might be more difficult i'm not sure yet <laughs> we'll figure that out as we get to it um basically i need a piece to block in this side now unfortunately i don't have a piece wide enough so I've got to figure out how to how to do that. I mean, the simplest solution really would be just to do that. Um, in fact, I might just do that. Just cut another piece off and just box that in. I mean, it's, it's not an exact fit on this side, but it, it's near enough. And then just do the same thing. Um, just cut it at this angle at the back, cut it to length, and then actually bolt these two pieces together and I think that might well be the best solution for that. Um, I need to fill in these sides, but these sides are fairly easy because there's, it, there's nothing on this side. Um, as far as the battery goes, there's plenty of space in the top for the battery. This is, this is one of the batteries. Um, it is a bit of a fiddle to get it 
to sit in there, but it will fit. I have tried it, it will fit. Um, so that's fine. Uh, and that's really it for now. Um, so what I've got to do now is, I think I'll cut a piece of this, put it on top of that. I need to make some pieces to go on the bottom here to box this in. Now that's going to be slightly more tricky because this, the bottom of this actually angles up. Um, I don't know if you can actually see that or not, but if you look at the way, like this is flat here, this is straight to the back of the weapon and the bottom of the receiver actually pitches up at the front. So I need to put this on in such a way, I want it to be flat. I don't want it to, you know, be cocked up at the bottom, if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> um, so I'll have to have a little think about that. But that's where we are at the moment. So I'm going to cut another piece of this, bolt it to the top of this. I've got some screws that I bought. Um, these are some little M3 screws. I'll show you those a bit more when we get into that. Um, but yeah we're getting there i mean like i say if i had a welder this would be a doddle but i don't have a welder so that's the end of it um let's cut another piece of this and we'll go from there Okay, so you just saw me over at the drill press and basically what I've done is I've drilled uh, some 2.5 millimeter holes in this piece, uh, which is the, the inside piece. The top piece, I then drilled the holes out to three millimeter and put a countersink on them. Uh, and that's for these, oh, hopefully you'll be able to see those. These are some three millimeter, M3 by five millimeter. Uh, and these are actually a hex head. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, uh, there you go. Uh, so they take a two millimeter Allen key and that's so the screws will sit flush in the holes like that, you see. So what I'm gonna do now is cut the threads on these holes. So I've got here an M3 by 0.5 millimeter uh, tap which is the same as the um, screws and I am now going to cut them now I dare say people say oh you're not using cutting oil it's one and a half millimeter thick aluminium you don't need cutting oil anyway um, so really I should put this in the vise and do it but I'm going to do it freehand because I can and so we'll just wind that in back it off The thing is, I say, this aluminium is so thin that, um, I mean, that's through already. <laughs> that's through already. So just wind it through, make sure it's come through on the other side. So it's cut the thread right into it and then back it off, unscrew it. And I'll do the rest of the holes like that. Right, so let's see how we did uh, that way round. Oh. Make sure we're lined up. Oh, this is the only trouble with little fiddly screws like this is trying to get them started.
we go. Marvellous, and that's nice and flush. So, right, let's put the rest in. Bought a big bag of these, <laughs> just, just for this job. But I'll find a use for them for something else. No worries about that. The most important thing to remember with when you're working with little tiny screws like this is that you don't want to um, over tighten them because this is, I say, this is very thin aluminium and uh, if you do these up too tight it will just rip the thread straight out so just go careful with it right there we go looks pretty good isn't it and so now we can test fit this and see what it looks like Any trouble with this is this wire is going to be a nuisance. Ah. All right, that's the top of the receiver done. Um, so I've got to drill a hole in the end here for a cross pin to uh, support. The front I've got to figure out a way to fix the back down but I think what I'm going to do is use JB weld for that because um, like I said I don't have a welder so let's do that next right it is the next day and uh, I actually glued this up with some JB weld last night and as you can see it didn't work um, I think the trouble is I've actually scraped it off now, but I think what happened was the the JB Weld that I have, uh, I think it's just old and it's gone off. So um, it didn't hold, which is not the end of the world. I've ordered some more and I'll try it again. Uh, but the thing is, I think I've actually kind of come to a bit of a halt on this one because there are some parts that I, that I needed that I didn't realize I would need, um, which I've got on order. So, for example, I need some clevis pins for the front and the back uh, and a couple of other little bits that will become apparent as time goes on. Um, so I think I'm going to make this video into a two-parter, which is not the end of the world because it's also given me the idea f to actually build the front of the gun um, with 3D print. So I'll actually like design and, and print something to go on the front of it, or try to anyway. Um, so it will give me time to do that. So yeah, um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed my rambling <laughs> as I try to figure this out as I'm going along and, uh, hopefully you'll join me, uh, for uh, the future video where we get this thing finished. So yeah, uh, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye. Thank you.